The attacking force makes for shore in specially built barges called assault landing craft. In the real thing, of course, planes and ships are giving the enemy plenty to think about. Shells and bombs keep his head down, while smoke covers the foreshore. Everything must work to split-second timing, if the complicated plan is to succeed. Every moment is important, to land before the smoke clears, to exploit the first surprise, to seize the beaches so that more and more equipment can be landed. Shells, guns, tanks and stores landed and rushed forward against the enemy. This job needs trained troops, and victory, troops trained to perfection. This is how they start. tackle all comers, unarmed or armed. You've got to cross any obstacle without help or hesitation. And defend yourself while you do it. First lot over, rig a rope for the heavier equipment. You must move unseen by a vigilant enemy night or day. vanish into the countryside, pop up at the most inconvenient time for the enemy. There are lots of tricks to put the infantry on level terms with mechanized columns. And of course, for the final assault, the bayonet is still the weapon of Britain's shock troops. The end of the pole represents the enemy's point. The ring at the other end, the target for the bayonet. Infantry rides into action today, but still fights on its feet.
Training goes on in the noise and smoke of actual battle conditions till the men have reached the highest pitch of fitness and fighting skill. The final test is the assault course. It's only 500 yards, but it's the worst country that nature and fiendish instructors can devise. The men make the course at top speed and under real fire. They start with a cold dip to dampen enthusiasm. Then a climb in case they feel cocky. way to get to grips with the enemy. Halfway round the course and you're whack. You think they've beaten you already, but you've got to go on. And they've still got a stack full of tricks. Bless them all. You need guts as well as muscles to be a sitting target with live rounds flying past. pretty well all in, but you've got to have hands and eyes steady to aim at a distant target and hit it. Counterattack. Troops in German uniform try and throw the exhausted men back. Counterattack is parried and broken. The shock troops storm into a village for the final assault. Every window, every doorway conceals a marksman at the business end of a machine gun. Spent legs braced for the last spurt, numbed minds automatically recall the lessons learned in months of training. The assault ends like a drill book exercise. Bayonet men first, each side of the door to stop the bolt hole, and then the bombers in for the kill. Training is realistic enough, but it's only a preparation for the real thing. And this is the real thing. A raid by combined forces of the Royal Navy, the Royal Air Force and the Army on the enemy-occupied coast. on a fortnight's leave. No wonder. This is what they've been training and praying for. The offensive. A final limbering up. And the barges set off for the coast in the first light of dawn. Cooperation between the three services has been perfectly organized. Navy's guns cover the landing troops. The RAF lays a smoke screen to conceal them. They push through the friendly smoke and are at grips with the German garrison. Street fighting is the bitterest and most difficult form of warfare, but the shock troops have it all at their fingertips. reached their objective. Wireless installations, dumps, refineries, everything of value to the enemy is destroyed expertly and in the shortest possible time. As the Navy steams in shore to embark the shock troops, they see a cloud of smoke flame. Another job well done, but not the last. 